That's how socialized medicine works in other countries. Healthcare resources are restricted and controlled by the government to save money. And this is the road that we're headed down. Rather than nationalizing charity, we should work to restore family and community values where we all come together and help those less fortunate than ourselves. This bill is going to harm the poor, not help them. Take, for example, the 10% tax on medical device companies. Until this bill, companies would donate their devices to needy people under a humanitarian use law. Now, with the 10% tax, they're not going to be able to do that. This bill will worsen the shortage of doctors. A recent survey showed that up to 30% of primary care doctors will quit practicing medicine if this bill is enacted. And that's at a time when the, Labor, the Bureau of Labor Statistics says that we're going to need 22% more doctors in 10 years. So what's going to happen is primary care doctors are going to be relegated to just supervising nurse practitioners and physician's assistants. In Canada, the pla a place that the liberal progressives think has a really great medical system, they're considering letting PAs do hip replacement surgery and knee replacement surgery. I don't think that's the kind of care we want in America. Massachusetts developed an interesting solution to their problem, their doctor shortage problem. They're called group doctor visits. And this is the truth. A bunch of people with the same problem all go to the doctor at the same time, sit in the same room, tell your story to the doctor. The doctor listens to you, evaluates everything, gives everybody some advice. I can't imagine what it's like if you've got a prostate problem. <laughs> Can you give Washington a brain? To address this shortage, changes are already happening in medical education. On the day that Obama signed the health legislation into law, a Texas medical school announced that it was shaving one year off its curriculum. And this is at a time when medical knowledge is exploding. Here's what we need in healthcare reform. First of all, we can start with the sickest of the sick people. 10% of people account for 70% of healthcare spending. By improving care for these patients, we can reduce overall costs up to 30%. So we need to expand me medical research on these serious illnesses so that we can improve our treatments and drop our costs right there. Secondly, people should have individual control over how your healthcare dollars are spent. There was a, a RAND study a few years ago showed that when people had a direct control over how they spent their health care dollars, they spent less money and they had the same health scores as people who had free care. But this new bill eliminated health savings accounts, which is what allows for that. So we need to at least repeal that provision. Insurance policies should be portable. We need to open up competition among insurance companies. And we need tort reform so that lawyers like John Edwards, we need tort reform so that lawyers like John Edwards can't become multi-millionaires by suing hard-working, well-meaning country doctors. In short, we need to restore the old doctor-patient relationship let market forces drive costs, increase competition in the insurance industry, limit malpractice cases to the truly egregious, get better at taking care of the sickest among us, and promote community and family values so that we can better help each other in times of need. Yeah.